The mathematical model is a boundary value problem similar to conduction, similar to laminar pipe flow, and many other examples that I have. And a boundary value problem is governing equations defined in a domain and boundary conditions defined at the edges of the domain. Let's take a look at the governing equations first and then later we will take a look at the boundary conditions. Now the governing equations are defined, um, are, are derived based on the physical principle of equilibrium of an infinitesimal element. That is, if it's equilibrium of a vanishingly small chunk of material in the plate. So if you take that vanishingly small chunk and apply F equal to MA, there is no acceleration because it is at rest, right? When the load is applied, it moves and then it comes to a rest. So it re F equal to MA reduces to just a force balance. So it's essentially a free body diagram on that infinitesimal element. Here's a two dimensional view of our vanishingly small chunk. On the left face, that's our normal stress. On the right face, the normal stress is slightly different and that difference is proportional to the gradient of sigma x in the x direction. That's the shear um, on that, on the lower face. The shear on the upper face is slightly different from the lower face and the difference is proportional to that term. And I will assume that we have 2D plane stress because we have a thin plate, so um, we'll assume that you know there are no there's no forces in the z direction, which in this case is perpendicular to the screen. So all stresses in the z direction, sigma z, tau x z, and tau y z are zero. So I don't need to worry about the equilibrium in the z direction. That's automatically satisfied. Now I can write the force balance in the x direction and get the differential equation of equilibrium in the x direction and that looks like that. So this term comes from here, this term comes from here, and then you can have a body force which is zero in our case. You can do the same kind of gymnastics in the y direction and get the um, the y component of the equilibrium equation and again the body force is zero. So we have two equations force from force balance in the x and y directions. We have three unknown functions, um, sigma x, sigma y, tau x, y, each of which is a function of x and y. There's no dependence on z because it's, you know, we have assumed 2D plane stress. So we need additional equations um, to, to close the equation set. And <clears throat> so we bring in the strain, the stress strain relations, um, and here, we'll assume the material is linear isotropic, so we can use the, um, the 2D plane stress version of Hooke's law. Um, so that's for sigma x. Similarly, you have for sigma y relating them to the normal strains, and then you can relate the shear stress to the shear strain. So the assumption embedded in here is that the material is linear and it's isotropic. Um, Isotropic um, ensures that we need only two constants, material constants, Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. Linear uh, <clears throat> assumes that the stress is directly proportional to the strain. But we have, so now we have three equations, but we have added three unknowns, epsilon x, epsilon y, and gamma xy, the three strains. So we need additional equations, which we will get from the strain displacement relations. That's the strain displacement relation for the, um, the normal strains, and that's for the shear strain. And the assumption embedded in there are small deformations. It's uh, very important to think about the assumptions embedded in, in all these relations. So we have added three equations and we have, but we have added only two unknowns, the U displacement in the X direction and V displacement, which is in the Y direction. So now we should have a close set of equations and let's take stock um, by summarizing the equations that we have. So we have the two equilibrium equations in the X and Y directions and I repeat them here. These are the governing equations, okay? And that's my abbreviation 
for governing equations. Um, we have three equations from the stress-strain relations and we have three strain displacement relations. So we have a total of eight equations. Unknown functions, we have three stress components, sigma x, sigma y, tau x, y, each of which is a function of x and y. Three strain components and two displacement components. So we have three plus three plus two, eight. So we have enough equations as unknown functions. Now, general purpose finite element codes such as ANSYS <clears throat> assume that the primary unknowns are the displacements, in this case, U and V, which means that we have to write the governing equations in terms of the, um, or the equilibrium equations in terms of U and V. And we can do that by substituting the strain displacement relations into the stress strain relations and then taking that and substituting that into the governing equation. Then the process, we are going from expressing the equation in terms of the stresses such as sigma x to the displacements u and v. You know, and this would be true for all components of the stress, uh, including tau x, y. So you would look at this equation, these two equations and say, this is my governing equations. And by using these two relations, I can write them in terms of displacements. And so essentially what I have are two second order partial differential equations in two displacements, u and v. And you can see this most readily by going to, by, you know, to the 1D case. Um, so if you go to the 1D case where, let's say you have only one component of the stress, sigma x, and it's only a function of x, then the equilibrium equation reduces to uh, d sigma x dx, plus fx equal to zero, um, strain displace uh, or stress strain is just that, and then strain displacement is that, so epsilon x is given by du dx, and if I take this in here, I'll get something like e d squared u dx squared plus fx is equal to zero. So in the 1D case, I get one second order ODE. In the 2D case, I would get two um, second order PDEs in u and v. Um, and you don't do this explicitly in the in the finite element method. Um, you do this you do the substitution when you derive the uh, you know when you implement the numerical solution procedure. Let's take a look at the boundary conditions next.